As you're well aware, we're very active in the Parliament at the moment, addressing the three legislative proposals on sustainable finance that have been sent to us by the Commission. However, I think it's also important that we use the power of the European Central Bank and the national central banks to ensure that we finance the sustainability transition with sufficient urgency. In this connection, I was very pleased to hear that in his speech earlier this month on monetary policy and the environment, Benoit Curé argued that the ECB, I'm quoting now, the ECB acting within its mandate can and should actively support the transition to a low carbon economy in two main ways. First, by helping to define the rules of the game, and second, by acting accordingly without prejudice to price stability. Now, that obviously, his two points there were not very detailed, so I'd be interested, first of all, to hear a little bit more detail from you about what that mean, m might mean. And my specific questions are, um, firstly, could we hear a little bit more about progress on the carbon stress tests for financial institutions? It's also been argued that macroprudential supervision should take into account externalities that may give rise to financial instability and identify the ecological imbalances that may cause material financial risks. So as a way of addressing environmental systemic risk, would you consider introducing ceilings on credit extension to certain carbon-intensive carbon or polluting activities? And in similar vein, given the urgency of the climate crisis, might there also be a role for credit, credit guidance measures, perhaps even introducing targets for lending to certain types of economic activity as defined in the sustainability taxonomy when that's agreed? Thank you. Thank you. Well, let me first say that uh, these discussions are... Uh, I mean, well, let me first give you the, the state of facts. First of all, we looked at the purchases of green bonds and uh, the proceeds of which are used for investment projects with an environmental benefit. And uh, the impact of the asset purchase program on the green bond market in the euro area. And the results were published in uh, our bulletin on November the 8th. So the ECB has purchased green bonds, both under its public sector and corporate sector purchase programs. Under the former, we currently hold around 24% of the PSPP, public sector purchase program, eligible green universe. Under the latter, the corporate sector purchase program, we hold about 20% of the eligible green corporate bond universe. Under both programs, the share we hold in green eligible bonds mirrors the share of our holdings in the entire eligible universe. So green bonds account for about 4% of the total eligible universe. So evidence shows that through the purchases, the euro system has reduced the yields of green bonds and supported their issuance by non-financial corporations. Also, we have some econometric analysis that uh, attributes a big part of the decline in the spreads on green bonds to our corporate sector purchase program, a trend which is particularly visible following the announcements of the CSPP in March 2016 and again after the start of a program in June of the same year. At the same time, issuance of green bonds picked up immediately after the announcement and has been rising ever since. And this is, a co is consistent with previous findings on the impact of the corporate sector program. This issue has been increased after the announcement of the program, especially among the eligible universe. Now, let me answer to your second question. Our efforts on climate change, our efforts are, are support, I'm sorry, climate-related climate, climate related risks have been discussed and uh, we have addressed some of our efforts to this objective. And basically our efforts are meant to support market participants, legislators and standard setting bodies in identifying the risks emerging from climate change and providing a clear framework to reorient financial flows and reduce such risks. In light of the global nature of this challenge, the ECB supports the ongoing work in international fora 
and has joined the network for greening the financial system, which brings together central banks and supervisors committed to developing common practices to address climate-related and environmental risks. Let me also recall that the protection of the environment is not the only secondary objective assigned to the ECB. Under the treaty, one could equally ask, for example, why the ECB should not promote industries that promise the strongest employment growth, such as carbon-intensive industries, irrespective of their ecological footprint. Equally importantly, equally importantly, the ECB is subject to the treaty requirement to act in accordance with the principle of an open market economy with free competition. And finally, the ECB is guided by its main mandate, which is to ensure price stability. This is to say that we are trying our, what I think is our best, but we continually, I certainly want to continuously review this issue, but we also have certain boundaries to our mandate within which we have to exercise the objective that you mentioned. Thank you. Philip Lambert. Mr. President, always a pleasure to have you here. Uh, I, I like your approach about, well, moving from a rules-based system to an institution-based system, and indeed I hope that we are still on this path. Uh, I want to continue on the line of my colleague uh, Molly Scott Cato, because I listened very carefully to your uh, answer, and I must say I was not completely satisfied, because you say, well, you know, we have multiple constraints or objectives, and of course we may, we may want to continue funding uh, job-intensive uh, but uh, climate-destructive activities. I, I recognize that, but uh, the fact is that uh, if we have runaway climate change, uh, we won't have any economy. So uh, the, the point I, I'm making here is to say, yes, it's true that as part of the QE, as part of its uh, activities, the ECB is uh, uh, funding, say, uh, activities that are, that are uh, helping uh, mitigate or fighting climate change, but at the same time, it still funds activities that go the, in the exact opposite way. And this is really what puzzles me, because if we look at market dynamics, you said, okay, well, we are committed to an open market economy, but if actually the short-term uh, obsession of the market economy is, is indeed discounting uh, the effects of climate change in a way that make them totally relevant in rational economic choices, then we are, in a way, uh, confronted with a market failure. So one thing is what the ECB is doing, we, we, its, own, its own means. The other thing is what we could do to regulate the economy uh, in a different way. And, and there, I do believe that, uh, well, we should probably have uh, binding disclosure, at the very least, binding uh, climate risk disclosure mechanism for the entire financial sector. Uh, so that we start having a sort of uh, market discipline there. But I'd like you to continue the reflection on this, because, and, and also if you can add something about how our monetary system is working, because you might say if we have interest-bearing deposits, that demands growth, and at the moment we could still not decouple growth from ecological impact, so I don't know how to solve this one. No, thank you. No, well, it's, it's not an easy, no. easy thing to solve at all, but... It, the, no, let me just say that we don't want to fund um, high employment and uh, uh, climate disruptive sectors deliberately. That's not the one. It was, I was simply listing all the different uh, secondary mandates that, uh, that the ECB has. Uh, also, let me say that this discussion has started in the Governing Council and uh, it's my intention to continue this discussion on how to further refine, uh, and if it's possible, refine to refine our monetary policy. We've done something. Uh, we, for example, for our pension fund portfolio, we delegated the proxy voting for equity investments to investment managers that have signed up to the UN principles for responsible investment requiring them to incorporate environmental, social, and corporate governance standards in their, in, in their voting policies. Together with our external asset managers, we are also considering broadening the options for ECB staff, 
to invest in sustainable financial products. For our own funds portfolio, which consists of the ECB's paid up capital and the General Reserve Fund, we started an internal investigation on how these criteria, the UN criteria that I mentioned before, could be implemented. So we're, we're trying to, to do something. It's not easy because monetary policy is meant to be for the whole of the euro area, meaning across countries, across sectors, and our objectives, our targets are defined in an aggregate fashion. Uh, but the, 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 there, is a, there is an increasing attention uh, by the governing council members to, to discuss this and reflect on this issue. Thank you.